Dr. Sarah Webb, who's an astrophysicist. She joins us now from Melbourne, Australia. Good to have you back with us, Doctor. Now, please do break this down for us. Tell us exactly what scientists have found and why it's so significant. Absolutely. So the results that have been released today are something called the gravitational wave background. We've got inklings that it is there and that we're starting to see it in our data. And what this is, is massive absolutely massive ripples in space and time that can last years to decades from supermassive black holes orbiting around each other. So it's a brand new type of discovery that Einstein did predict with his general relativity equations, but that we haven't had firm evidence for as of yet. Yes. Now, also explain to us exactly what Albert Einstein's theory of relativity is and why this discovery goes a step closer to proving that. Yeah. So general relativity is probably the most successful scientific theory we have. It has been tested several times. And what it outlines is that our existence in the universe is in something called space and time. They are linked together. And what happens and what creates gravity is mass bending space and time, very much like if you stand on the middle of a trampoline and you get that little dip. That's essentially happening with all mass in the universe. Now, the amazing thing about space and time is that it's not static, it can move. And so what we see with gravitational waves is energy being lost in distortions of this fabric. You can imagine jumping up and down on the trampoline and you get some ripples. So Einstein's theory predicts all sorts of things, some that we've already uh, seen and observed. And this is just one more element to confirm that we do think this is the most correct understanding of what causes gravity uh, and what space time is in our universe. Yes, and Doctor, we know gravitational waves aren't new. Scientists have discovered them before. But these waves are different, aren't they? Because they involve, uh, quote, supermassive black holes as opposed to the normal ones. Is that right? That's, that's exactly right. So we've seen uh, just under 100 mergers of smaller black holes together with LIGO and Virgo detectors here on the Earth. They're much smaller black holes and they merge very quickly. These gravitational waves are something we call low frequency. So they are absolutely enormous. They have very long uh, wave wavelength period compared to the other gravitational waves. And we don't detect them here on Earth. We use dead stars that are spinning, something called pulsars, timing those pulsars and when their beams hit the Earth to make a gravitational wave detector the size of our galaxy. So it wouldn't be possible if we didn't have these uh, off-Earth observations. Of course, this is just uh, the initial uh, discovery in terms of these gravitational waves from these supermassive black holes. So what's next in terms of the research? What else are you hoping to find after this? So there's many incredible teams all around the world who are working together collaboratively to try and get further results out of this. So to have a more significant, statistically significant um, calculation of this result in the coming years. And so what will be interesting is we're going to see more data reduction, more noise reduction in the data and more observations. And then hopefully we will see uh, a further confirmation that what we have been observing for the last 15 years continues to be observed. Okay, exciting times. Dr. Sarah Webb, always a pleasure. Thanks so much again for joining us. Thank you.